This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. And to make a difference, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. And look at this in verse Matthew Gospel chapter 5, verse 16. Jesus also said this, let your light so shine before men. Come on. Let your light so shine. A true partner will make his light to shine before people. Let your light. You know, they just ask you to do something and you start grumbling. Ask her, please, can you go and fix this thing? They are grumbling. But they want money. They want money, but they don't want to work for it. Can you go and fix that? I can't do that. I'm tired. I'm very weak. I can't do that. But the same people want you to give them money. How? How did they get money? Can you go and fix this? Oh, they come with an excuse. My leg is paining me. My head is paining me. Can you go and fix this? They come with one excuse or the other. People with excuse mess up their own destiny. You see somebody always giving excuse. They mess up their own destiny. Not witchcraft. I didn't call witch here. I didn't say witchcraft will mess up their... I said them themselves have the potential to mess up their own destiny. A lazy man said that he's a lion in the street. That he's a lion right there at the street there. In the street there. Well, he's not willing to go. He said that he's a lion outside. A lazy man is saying that. So here Jesus was sharing. He said, let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light. Because it's men that sees you. He didn't say let your light shine before God. Before who? Before men. Because they have the reward capacity. They have the ability to push your dream forward. They have what it takes to help you get to your destination. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Men improve your economic life, your life that comes to them it look like they have nothing to do that season is a free time that god has given to you to improve yourself for the next season that will come with demands most people don't understand this there is a season that comes with demands people are inviting you can you speak in this conference can you be here to tell us i don't know what to say i don't know what to say the season of preparation was neglected and those who neglect the season of preparation will not be qualified to perform effectively. You walk on it. And Jesus said they said, let your light so shine before men. Why before men? Why did he say, let your light so shine before angels? He said, let your light so shine before men. Why? Because men have a reward system. Why? Because men are the ones that will recommend you. Men are the ones that will speak about you. Men are the ones that will tell people about you. He said, let your light shine before men. You know why? Men holds a major part of your destiny. Yes. If you don't know it, know it this evening. There are places you will never get to in your life until somebody come and open the door for you. You will never get to that place in your life. Until somebody comes and opens the door. That was why I said, let your light so shine before men. Why? Because there are men who their job is to push you forward. But your attitude could shut those doors. And when doors that Things that close doors. I said, let your light so shine. So a true partner is somebody who when it gets to a place, his light is shining. It's a true partner. His light is shining. I want this area to work very well. I want that area. This area, I've not been seeing people working on that area. I'm going to accept the responsibility. This area, I'm not seeing somebody doing anything. I'm going to accept it. I'm looking for opportunity. So that was listening to Kitman. It was very interesting time. It said something that got my attention. It said many years ago, he was working with Brother Hagen. And they were working together. He was preaching and preaching. And a time come, they said, of like, you know, collecting cards. No longer preaching. And that can get you offended. I was supposed to be preaching 
And now you withdraw me from preaching and said, go and be filing in cards. There are things if they don't die in you, when you try to rise, they will kill your rising. They will ruin your rising. There are things you need to deal with before you rise. Rising is not the problem. It's whether you will stay there. To rise is not the problem. It's whether you're going to maintain that level of your life because you can rise and don't have the structure to sustain your progress. How can they tell me that kind of thing? Why would they, tell me, why would they ask me to do that kind of thing? Look at other people. The reason why they did not ask other people because they have interest on you. If I come and I always tell you, help me do this. I always tell you, help me do this. I'm not just telling you to help me do this all the time because I want you to do it. There is something I'm trying to find out. If always I come, I drop the job with you. Always I come, I drop the job with you. It's more than a job. There is something I'm tracking. I want to find out something about you. And soon I find it out will decide my decisions because when I make my decisions, I won't tell you. When I make my recommendations, I won't tell you. So when somebody always come and tell you, go do this, go do that, go do this, they are, they are allowing you like to run their lives, there is a statement they are making. And if you are not smart, you won't get it. Why are they always sending me? Why am I always the one they are asking to do this? Why am I, this other person, they, why are they give me that kind of job? It's not for somebody like me. That's how people walk away from opportunities that will change their life, that will change their story because of their inability to stay faithful with the things that work. I know a particular fellow that worked for me for over two years for free. For free. Even today, he's still working for us for free. Ministry wise. And he was doing those things, and God who lives in heaven, God, God who dwells in heaven, sees how you support men, then he will send men into your life. So when somebody's praying, God, send me my destiny helpers. Let them not be in a hurry to pray that prayer. Let them go and find somebody and start helping as they can attract the helpers. There is no need praying for destiny helpers to come when you're a wicked helper. There is no need. You pull your hands from people when they need you most. You take your hands away. You give reasons why you can't do that. You give reasons why you can't support. But you want destiny helpers. How will they come? You are not helping nobody. There is nobody that can boldly say that, man, the way this woman is helping me, the way she's just encouraging me, the way she's going extra mile. That is why sometimes God takes you to a place where the grasses are not cut, as he can give you the cutlass to start cutting it. He has called you to do it there. Ah, this place serve. How many people did there? Ah, now who did there serve? Me, I want we have people there where where. He has brought you to a place where the grasses are there. And then he has given you the cutlass. Your destiny is before you. But you see, it takes wisdom to find out that destinies don't just happen. You don't just come into a major open door. There are things that lead to those doors. That is why people pray and sometimes they are wondering, is, is God deaf? Can't he hear my prayer? Not that he cannot hear your prayer. There are principles that lead to the what you're asking for. Hmm. Oh my God, thank you, Jesus. There are principles that lead to what you are asking for. There is a principle of diligence. There is a principle of diligence. They gave you a job and they said the job should be delivered in the next three hours. And you came and said, well, you know, I've been there for one road. I don't know, say, I missed my way. There are people that will tolerate you. But at a particular point, there are people that will never give you the opportunity to express your gift. Why? You have no capacity to manage time. And time is a major resource when it comes to the pursuit of a vision. Time is a major resource. They come with excuses. <laughs> come with excuses. <laughs> so here, Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. You know, some people are, ah, man, I need to leave my assignment and go and look for money. God gave them something to do. You know, this evening I was just today, I was just reflecting. When I had the opportunity to live in the US, and I was just like God. Or what could have happened to me if I've taken that option to live in the US? And then he started sharing with me what could have happened. You see, we're not led by opportunity, we're led by the Spirit of God. 
And those who get led by opportunity get stranded. If God is not in need to be stranded, that's how people get stranded. They trusted so much in their gift and in their charisma only for life to show up and they notice they are not stranded. <laughs> they are not stranded. You can't be led by opportunity. You have to be led by the Spirit of God. That is how you get led by the Spirit of God. You cannot say, ah, man, this place, ah, the way things, they work here, green pastor, they are group. You just move. Like one of our sisters was sharing with me, a lady got a job in Lagos. And she was working hard to go and the mother said, don't go for that job. The job looked juicy. But she did not do that job more than one week. She died in that job. When you're led by opportunity, you endanger your future. Some places God will take you and say, cut the grasses. It doesn't look juicy, but you'll find your oil there. You'll find your treasure there. A lot of people are looking for a perfect life. A place that is made ready. A place that everything is okay. A place where they can contribute. What is the joy of being part of something you never contributed to? There is no joy in it. But part of something that you have something to say about it. I know when we came to this point. I know what happened at this point. Your story should be a kind of story that when you're telling people, he said, I broke this ground. I know the point at which I break this ground. I know the point at which this ground was broken. I know the point at which it was broken. True partners will look for opportunity to make a difference. How do I help you? How do I make it easy for you? When you make things difficult for people, you are just saying, God, I want more people that will make life difficult for me. <laughs> uh, that's what you just sent out when you make things difficult for people you're saying to God God I just want my life to be more tough and I don't like a tough life if you're like me just want it to be easy and make a progress okay the next attitude of a partner is that they have passion for the vision they have passion for the vision the first thing I said they have the desire to make a difference the second thing is they have passion for the vision. They are not people you force them to do something. They are people who have passion to do something. You don't force them to do something. You don't force them to do something. You don't force them to do something. They have passion to do something. You know, you can look at two people and then say, man, this boy is going somewhere very far. In their attitude, in their way of doing things, you look at this lady is going very far. Because you can see it in the attitude. You can see the way they respond to work, they respond to things, and how diligent they are. You can tell. It's easy to see a prophecy in people. <laughs> I said, it's easy to see a prophecy in people. I said, this man will go places. Abba Rusha, this man will go places. Somebody was telling somebody some few days back, he said, are you surprised where I am? Ben said, I'm not surprised. I could have been surprised if you did not succeed. Because you have, had, you have done so much to rise in life. So a partner is somebody that has a passion for the vision. He has a passion. It's not somebody that somebody can say, ah, is he there for that place? Wait till they do for that place. No, they don't hang out with you. You know, you know where you're going to. You know your direction. You know your destination. You know where you're going with your life. You've made your decision with the quality of life you want to live. And somebody's asking you as you stay there. What kind of question is that? You have made a decision. This is where I am. Unstable people cannot be trusted in the time of crisis. Because they don't have what it takes to overcome the storms of life. A person who is unstable. How stable? How stable is this person? What is their level of stability? Will they be there when it's raining? Will they be there when the sun is shining? Will they be there when the storm is on? Will they be there when the crisis of life is there? 
something happened to one of our friends today and I was called this evening from Moscow police station and uh, it's a good news actually for someone but somehow for some other people and it's supposed to, this is what is going on and uh, you need to say something and then I have to call somebody in bias and said you need to do this and the person said hey apostle we are going to stand with this person this person who will stand with him because he have always stand with us in this house not a member of our church it's not about church something it's about a group he said we are going to give him all the the way the person was speaking the person, the person that have the situation is not with us on phone but somebody is already speaking on their behalf somebody you see can you live a life where you contribute and people can feel the impact of your contribution that somebody can feel the impact that man this woman no no this woman matter now our matter this man matter now our matter what cannot there are people that they may have situation i'll just do like that no see that have you just sent somebody go there you cannot force me to go anywhere I don't want to go. I'm the pastor of this church. You can't force me. Nobody can force me. Say you must be there. Who are you? Who are you to tell me that I must be there? Are you the one that gave me the vision? Nobody can force me. And my will, I can say, I will come, and I can decide not to come. Ah, pastor, you didn't come. I'm leaving church. Okay. What else again? That's the only thing possible. But there are people that will be in situations. Said I'll be there. I'll be there. Why? Because they have stood. With the vision, they have stood with me when most people won't stand with me. You reap what you sow, that's how life is. You can't sow instability and reap stability. No, no. You never work like that. You, you don't support, you don't give your hands. If you have opportunity that is better than what we're doing here this evening, you will take, you will pre, you'll prefer that one. So, so when me myself have opportunity which one will I prefer <laughs> but that's how it works but when somebody's coming out people can tell that this person is coming out this person is giving the best to the vision this person is committed get to a point in a vision where people can easily recognize your impute your investment your sacrifice and diligence don't just hang around a vision contribute to it don't just hang around a vision. Don't hang around and say, well, I they go to that church. Well, I they go to that place. Well, I they go here. No. Don't just hang around country boats. Like that lady spoke to me. said, we can't take this for granted. We need to do something for him. Because they have seen how he comes out. If there is a financial contribution, he will contribute. If there is any situation, he will show up. If there is anything, he will show up. So she called me and said, we are not taking this lightly. We we'll better do something. Why? Because of his level of commitment. Commitment is an investment. Commitment is an investment. Don't live a life where you are not committed don't live a life where you are not committed live a life where your commitment can be felt someone could tell she'll be there he'll be there no he'll be there uh, i don't know if she will come today i don't know if he will come today you cannot predict their consistency and that's not too good several days ago a friend asked me to preach for him because he was not in town he traveled so as I was going so his church called, he called his church said have a sweet man come they said no he said don't worry he will come he'll be there he'll, he'll be there don't worry there is no need to bother yourself he'll and before they will finish talking, I'm already there. People should be able to predict you. They should be able to know that you're going to show up. If you're not passionate about the vision, there is no need to be part of the vision. Passion is the energy of vision. There has to be passion in that vision. 
Because you're passionate about the vision, you're not looking for excuse, you're looking for opportunity to serve. You're not looking for excuse. This one know they serve. That one know they serve. I've seen people, they give all kinds of excuses. This one is not on ground. That one is not there. This one is not there. They give all kinds of excuses. But they will never make a sacrifice that will contribute for we to take that excuse out of that vision. They don't make that kind of sacrifice. There are people that their job is to see faults. Their job is to see things that are not well done. But they never contribute to anything. Why is this place like this? Why haven't they done like this? Have you gone before and buy the rugs? And spend like 300,000 and buy it? And say, well, I don't like the way it looks. Let me change it. Every true leader lead by example. When you're making contribution, be part of those that will, will produce the example part of it for others to follow. That's how you lead. Now, why is this place like this? Why is this like this? It's like this because they require funds, resources. A wise person will always look for opportunity to contribute, not an opportunity to make mockery of what people are working on. It's a wise person. He will look for opportunity to contribute. And this is number they, they play all the time. They don't know when to be serious. They don't know when to pursue a vision. A partner is a person who is passionate about a vision. He's passionate about a vision. He's passionate. What can I do? I need to do this. I don't have money to give you, but whatever thing you want me to do, cut the grass, wash the toilet, clean place, mob, I can't do that for now. That will be my offering. That will be my sacrifice. A true partner seeks for an opportunity to add, to contribute, to invest. They are looking. Which area do I invest? They are looking for that. And that is what brings the manifestation, the expression of the blessing in people's lives. They are looking for opportunity. What can I do? There are people who just sit back to just criticize. This is happening, that is happening. Why are they not doing this? Why are they not doing that? And the person have not done anything. It is foolish to criticize something that you don't contribute towards. You don't contribute towards it, but you're criticizing it. Why are you criticizing it? You're supposed to make contribution. You're supposed to add to it. Now somebody went and see a church. Oh, look at in that church. Look at what they are doing in that church. And then they want to compare you with that church. And the question is, do you have their kind of resources? Do you have their kind of resources? Oh, in that church, they even bought cars for their pastors. Go check the pastors they bought cars for. They walk almost their life out. I've been in church leadership. I can tell you things that happen in church. They don't just buy car and give you. They see how you are pouring your life out. They see the souls. They see your outreach. They see the things you're doing. No, no, no. This man has poured his life out. Let's do something. You won't ask them to do something. They'll be compelled. Why? Because they can see the fruits of your work. A man has no work. He's looking for money. He never work. He never win one so. And at this kind of money that they give me, 2,000 naira. Then they begin to black, they hang around some church members and then they begin to gossip. They have not won a soul. They have not produced. They have not produced. There is no fruit of their calling yet. There is no fruit of their ministry yet. Your ministry must have fruit before you can demand the leisure that you want to see. But there is no fruit yet. And they are demanding. <laughs> there is no fruit yet. When I walk myself, 
Sometimes you walk and walk and walk. You're ministering, you're doing this, you're doing that. So you can buy whatever you want to drive and drive. If, if I need the car, I don't need to bother for a car. Why would I worry for a car? I don't need to worry for that. There are people who know that I'm changing their life. They will, uh, Apostle, that won't be a problem. Who can always do that one? Because they could see how you're pouring your life out. Have you poured your life out? Availability doesn't equal commitment. Availability that you're available does not mean you're committed. You can be around, but you're not committed. I'm available now, but I die around. You die around, but you need to contribute something. Availability does not equal commitment. Commitment is a proof that your availability is making sense. Availability does not equal commitment. Let's say, for instance, that somebody hang around you, always there around you. It's available, but it's helping you. All your neighbors in your yard, are they not available before you? I, you know they see them all on our neighbors. They go, ah, Mama so so, good evening. Papa so so, good morning. Uncle so so, good evening. And they greet you and they do that. They are available. They see them, but are they committed to your life? They are not committed to your life. And commitment is what you use in rating people's service. A partner is someone who is passionate about the vision. They are passionate. What can I do to contribute? Their passion for the vision makes them break limitation. They are not asking for something they have not worked for. They are working for something that you will ask them, what reward do I give to you? A man has not worked, he's looking for position. I've seen people like that. And what I do, I just calm them down, made them sit down where. When now they give you a platform where you're not committed, you are not serving, you are not adding, and you want to, who do you want to lead? How are you going to lead them? How you want to do them? The people are they not seeing you? They are seeing you. Commitment is in the voice of vision. It's something you can connect with. It's something you can relate with. They say we're meeting by 5. You come by 5.30 with excuse. They say we're meeting by 5. You come by 6.30 and give excuse. Somebody talk and shout for them back. You're building a castle without a future. Without a foundation. It will soon crash. There are principles that brings you to the top because you choose to work them. You choose to work them. You choose to work them. You choose to walk them. And let me say this to you as we go forward in this teaching. One of the attitudes of a partner is the ability to recognize moments of investment. The ability to recognize what? Moments of what? Of investment. What have you invested? <laughs> The ability to recognize moments of investment. If you invest into this ministry, you won't watch anybody talk you down. You'll be after them. Your money didn't, I know so. But if your money no day inside this place, if somebody try to talk down the vision, you go even join them. That's what they do for that place. So. Your money no day inside them. Your money no day there. Where your money day, now there you go defend. Nobody so. Where the, where, the heart, where the treasure of a man is, there will, what? There will his heart be. You go define them. Because your money did there now. What's it? Why you go do that kind of thing? Your money did there. You know what you don't labor. But somebody who has no stake, no commitment, their attitude will also show it. Because they have no investment in it. I never give a vision to people who have not invested into the vision. You know why I'm saying this? Because they can't defend it. They have not invested. They have not put their money there. Like my, president, my, my pastor would say, he said, 
if you talk about uh, if you talk about him he will not bother you if you talk anything against him he will not bother you but if you if you come after his vision then you find you find that who he is yes sir. if you like talk about him gossip for back you know, worry. no get time but anything you do that has to affect his vision he says it's coming for the person why because his vision his vision and sometimes there are hard decisions to make a true partner someone who, who said they believe in what you're doing they will recognize moments and seasons and they said man don't worry about this uh, I, I will take care of this sleep concerning this let me run this let me do this partners reduce burden partners help in reducing stress partners help in contributing to focus they help in reducing burden they help in reducing stress they help in contributing to focus that's why they are partners and, and when you are that way the tendency for you to attract people like that will, will, will be great for you just if you're a young person you have a vision you want to run in life you don't wait for till you get to 20 years before you start pursuing your vision all of you that are 18 years old 16 years old you don't need to wait for 25 years old before you start pursuing your vision you don't need to wait you start pursuing your vision by, cult by cultivating the attitude that will be the structure of the vision that's how you start you start pursuing a vision. If you're a young person here, you're listening to me by cultivating the attitude that will structure, that will be like a structure to carry the vision. You don't need to wait for 40 years. Because at 40, you're supposed to be stable somehow with your life. I pray you receive wisdom. That's what I pray for you. I pray you receive wisdom because the, the early you have wisdom, the better for you. You're going to school and you see people are hitting boom, 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 boom. That's nowhere to be. You have a vision. Vision defined environment. Vision defined company. Vision defines association. Vision defines company. It defines association. Negative influence is a distraction to vision. Negative influence is a what? Is a distraction to vision. There are influence you don't need because you have a vision. Don't make yourself local if God has made you global. Don't make yourself local if God has made you global. Don't make yourself local. Partners, they recognize moments of investments. Moments of investments. I need to invest into this. We need to invest into this. What do we do about this? A true partner comes with initiatives. Thinking better ways in which things can be done. Initiative, they are thinking. The kind of church I have in mind is a church where people contribute and make difference with their life, not just in church but in society. That you're standing out and be a person of excellence. A person of excellence. So you recognize those moments and you begin to point to those moments, you begin to serve those moments. Don't let your need extract your passion to be committed. That's another problem. Don't let your needs distract your passion to be committed. Your needs needs can be a distraction. Oh, I need to do this one. No, I need to do that one. Well, we have all kinds of needs in life. The most important thing is oh, what is God's vision for our life? What is my priority? This one, I'll do it later. 
They like you talk from now to next year. That's the person's business. This one, I'll do it later. I'm not ready for this one. This one, I'm not interested. This one, I'm not interested. This is my priority. You must get to that point where you know what is what? The priority. Any other thing can wait. Let priority take the lead. Any other thing can wait. Any other thing can wait. Why? Because if you don't understand your priority, it will be difficult for you to grow in life. And one of the reasons why most people are not growing according to how they should grow is because their priority is mixed up. They want to please everybody at the expense of their God-given vision. I want them to be happy with me. What, what, what's my business somebody being happy with me? That's not the goal. My goal is not for you to be happy with me. My goal is the priority of the vision. Do you think I'm being everybody's good book? There are people you help them today. Help them. Give them everything. If you like, cut your hand and give them. Make them verse for you. Make one problem happen. You go, you go, you go shock you more than sort of speaking in English. You go shock you the way they go behave. You say, now wow, this person, why I don't help like this? Really. They don't care. They don't care. It doesn't matter what you do for them. And that is why a person with a grateful attitude, because that you cultivate. That you cultivate. The relationship may not have not ended well, the way it should have ended, but this person was really a blessing. He was there for me. And I acknowledge that in my heart. There are people I wish I could, time could have helped me to go back. I said, I just want to bless you. I just want to bless you for what you did for us 15 years ago. I just want to bless you. I just want to buy you a car. I just want to support you for that thing you did for me 15 years ago. But there are certain people who sow but they have no time to reap because they can't follow the process of maturity. Maturity is a process. Maturity is a process. Maturity, no be age, you. No be age. No be say, girl, don't grow. And she have big body, or she's tall, or how she look like a young man. He has a chest, he has beards in his. That's not maturity. That is biology. Maturity is in discipline. Maturity is in understanding. Maturity is in the display of wisdom. Maturity is in the expression of knowledge. Maturity. Don't confuse biology for maturity. They are not the same. Hallelujah. The next thing, what can I do to move the vision forward? It's one of the attitudes that partners have. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? You bring out a sheet of paper and you start writing what I can do from where I am to make a difference. What can I do? Why am I teaching this? A lot of you have vision. As you can easily get help on time because you started sowing help on time. Hmm. Yes, so. Why did I say this? Several years ago, maybe I said this to some of you, some of you. And I have this friend, she lives in the New York and she, she does some radio show and other things. And one time she asked me, Can I can you help me apostle to come for the show every Wednesday? I said, Yes, ma I will. I was there before the time. I was there before the time. Let me tell you one thing about success for people. Successful people are good time managers. Anybody who can manage time well is a person who is on a journey of destruction. A person who can manage a person who can't manage time very well can never get to the top. Why? Because time is what it takes. Your ability to manage time. I saw be there, man. I'll be there. I'm right exactly the time I'm there. Do the broadcast was doing that and she was so happy. I was serving. I was not serving for what you can give. I was serving because I needed to sow that seed of a help as I can find it in my purpose. 
People don't know this. A lot of people don't know that your purpose will require helpers. But you first have to be a helper to someone. So I was helping her. I was ministering. I was con- and when I was helping her, somebody saw me and that person saw what we are doing and called and said, I like that your guy. 